Big money. See just how much North Shore businesses are benefiting from successful sports seasons. Plus, the candidates for governor face off for the third and final time. And Point News was there for the governor's comments about Point Park's new playhouse. Kennywood is getting visitors into the Halloween spirit. We'll take you behind the scenes of Point of the park's Phantom Fright Nights. Point News starts now. Live from the Point Park University Broadcast Center in downtown Pittsburgh, this is Point News. Hello and welcome to Point News. I'm Tyler Jeske. And I'm Jillian Trainer. The Pirates broke the single season attendance record at PNC Park this year with their winning ways. This puts business on the North Shore on the rise as the Pirates punch their ticket to their second consecutive postseason. Port News reporter Kelsey Metzger has more. Back-to-back -back Bucktober seasons has put the North Shore on the map, and now local establishments are banking on the Bucks. There's a lot more, you know, crowds, a lot more business, a lot more spread around here, and as you can see, as an affected, uh, other businesses there are coming in here, and it's now a draw, and a lot of people want to be a part of it again. 2013 marked the end of a drought not only for the Pirates but for local businesses like McFadden's on the North Shore. For a long time down here with people who worked in bars was just, okay, when's Steeler game going to get here? And Pirate season just kind of got you through the summer. But now, with the differences between having eight home Pirate or home Steeler games, you have 81 home Pirate games. In their first winning season in 20 years, the Pirates had a 13.7% increase in attendance, and this year's Bucks hit the milestone on their last regular season game at PNC Park. 2,442,564 fans came to PNC Park in 2014, the most ever in one season. And businesses say it's made the difference. It, it, it's made a huge jump for us. You know, the t shirts and the firework nights, where we still had a pretty good draw to add on to our Friday and Saturday nights. But the big difference I see the most is during the weekdays. With the Pirates on the rise for the past few years, the North Shore economy is counting on the Bucks and fans to continue to bring in business. It's just better for everybody, better for the fire, uh, Pirates, better for the businesses down here, just better all around. Reporting for Point News, I'm Kelsey Metzger. A new poll from Quinnipiac University shows a slight number shift in the race for governor. The telephone poll shows Governor Tom Corbett picked up support among likely voters, but Democrat Tom Wolf still leads by 17 percentage points. Last evening, WTAE-TV hosted the third and final debate between the two candidates. Governor Tom Corbett criticized Tom Wolf for not being more specific in the layout of his administration, while Tom Wolf criticized Corbett on cutting education and his overall leadership. Point News caught up with both candidates afterward. I think the, the money that we've invested at Point Park is going to have a tremendous impact on the students that are all graduating from there. On the public of uh, Western Pennsylvania, they're going to be able to see plays in a new uh, playhouse down here in downtown Pittsburgh. It's going to help complete a re renovation of uh, Wood Street started by PNC. There was six point. $4 billion in basic education. The first year he was governor, that was cut to $5.3 billion for basic education, his accountability block grants, and charter school reimbursement. That's the counterpart of what he inherited. That's a billion dollar cut. Election day is November 4th. The U.S. Supreme Court decided Monday that they would allow the, rule, they would allow the same sex marriage rulings to stand in Virginia. Utah, Oklahoma, Indiana, and Wisconsin, meaning that the majority of Americans now live in states where gay couples can wed. The decision came without explanation on Monday and may dramatically help with the movement across the nation. Coming up on Point News, the Point Park student got, gets his shot at the big time. How he says wanting a little extra money turned into a modeling contract. Mini golf never looked like this. Why Pittsburghers were doing anything but parking in these spaces all across the city. We are a social people. We share our inspiration, wisdom, creations, and memories. We share what makes us laugh and what angers us. Built on the notion of a free flow of ideas, our country thrives on the freedom of speech. Without it, who would watch over our governing powers? And how would we share our history to make a difference for the future? It's this freedom to share that gives us a reason to listen. Start your morning with City News. Start your morning with Campus News. Start your morning with political coverage. Start your morning with fun.
start your morning with us, only on Daybreak. Did you know that Point Park has a cheerleading squad? Not only do our cheerleaders represent Point Park at regional and national competitions, but they also promote spirit and awareness of every sports team on campus. Come to any men's or women's varsity basketball game at home to watch the cheerleaders perform at halftime and cheer from the sidelines from the first jump ball to the final buzzer. Sports not your thing? You can catch the cheer team lead the crowd at the fall and spring pep rallies as well or at several competitions around Pittsburgh each year. So what are you waiting for? Show the Point Park cheerleaders the support they show you. To me, freedom of speech means there are no barriers to voice opinions. Communication is key to a functioning society and relationships in those societies. I believe our forefathers gave us this right so if concerns or problems arise, we have the right to respectively use words, aids, and body language to give our message. Compromise may not always be met, but when it does meet, it opens up the world to new ideas, relationships, and makes the world become a happier place. Is coffee drinking in your DNA? A new study shows that genetic variants may be linked with your coffee consumption. The study looked for differences in DNA affected by drinking more or less coffee. This is all according to a press release from Harvard School of Public Health. Because coffee consumption can impact health, this new research may help identify people who would benefit from increasing or decreasing the amount of coffee they drink each day. It seems as though Point Park and Hollywood are crossing paths once again, this time in the world of modeling. Student Maz Matt Nazca was recently signed with the talent agency Wilhelmina. Point News talks with Matt about how he got his big break. Back home doing construction for my dad, playing basketball for the school. I thought, you know, I wanted to make a little money on the side, so I went uh, to Doherty. Before I signed, I got a direct message from someone on uh, Wilhelmina, and they said, like, yo, you know, I think you're perfect for our, our agency. Matt also recently signed a TV agency in New York. He's hoping that this move can help his acting career get going. Parking spaces are a hot commodity in any city. Recently, Pittsburgh took part in the ninth annual parking day, where something, else, where something we see every day is transformed into something a little more interactive. Point News reporter Alexis Adams has the story. Parking day is a worldwide event where a wide variety of people can transform metered parking spots into temporary public parks. This year, some Pittsburghers enjoyed a golf theme. Those are in Lawrenceville. They've got at least 10. I, I, yeah, for, I lost count how many they have. They've turned parking spaces and little parking lots into putt-putt. Yeah, mini golf uh, courses all over there. Um, our golf course is a sweeper, and you hit it under and goes into a little flower pot of the tube with a the sweeper. <laughs> There's a lot of kids that like to come by, which is nice. The whole idea of the parking day is you get a parking spot. You have to make something cool that the community will like, and I think the golfings is a, the golfings a really good idea. The project is designed to help residents reimagine the way public space is used and to create temporary art or parks for the general public to enjoy. Even the mayor's office participated this year. This year, the mayor decided to have a beach theme down the street, and we're the finance department with the city. We have a separate theme going on, which behind us is a sort of a tropical um, picnic. Parking Day started in 2005 in San Francisco and continues to grow. They hope to continue to use the event to spread awareness and bring the community together. Parking Day is the number one event in the world today. What's up, what's up? Reporting for Point News, I'm Alexis Adams. Coming up on Point News, fall showers could impact part of your weekend. The forecast is coming up. This time of year, Kennywood Park gives new meaning to thrill seekers. Coming up, Point News takes you behind the scenes of Phantom Fright Nights. Here at the Pioneer sideline, we get freshmen involved as quickly as possible so they get the real world experience on air and behind the scenes to set themselves apart in internships and potential jobs. Blaine, where is that video? I needed it in Key Pro like yesterday. All right, I got you, Chris. But I had a quick question for you guys. What do you mean the question? Like, it's always a question. Me, uh, it's always a what? Where is he? Blaine. 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 Freshman, you can't find any good ones anymore. Do you know all the things you can do with your student ID? A 
along with getting discounts to some of the restaurants around campus. Showing your Point Park ID can net you deals on tickets at theaters in the Cultural District. To check out all the current options, just search Student Discounts on the Point Park University homepage. An expression. A belief. A symbol. Freedom to worship. An unspoken word. To express yourself means standing up for what you believe in. There's a freedom to worship freedom to live, to speak never saying a word, to love, to let your voice be heard, the light of your own path. For more information, visit www.freedomofspeechpsa.org. chill in the air in Pittsburgh and it's not just the falling temperatures. Kennywood Park is also sending chills at the spines of those brave enough to enter its park. It's part of the annual Phantom Fright Night events leading up to the Halloween. One of these brave people is our own Julia Kramer who took a behind the scenes tour. I'm here at Kennywood at Pittsburgh's favorite amusement park at this year's 13th annual Phantom Fright Nights. Celebrations are in full swing, so come on down and be prepared to get scared. An eerie, unmistakable mood is being set through the midways of Kennywood Park. But like the undead crawling out of their graves, behind closed doors, scare actors transform for a long night of horrors. Scaring people, it's just an awesome, it's awesome to see the, the people's faces, their reactions and stuff like that, it's great. After makeup artists work their magic transforming more than 300 ghouls, vampires and other creatures of the night, patrons enter through a smoke and fog filled tunnel into a night sure to be full of surprises. Uh, there's always a variety of discounts out there for Phantom Fright Nights, most notably your Giant Eagle tickets, but if you're a college student, you can use your college ID opening weekend, the 26th and 27th, Sunday, October 12th, or Halloween night, the 31st and November 1st, to get half price admission into Phantom Fright Nights. So Phantom Fright Nights is a great way to come out to the park, see it in a different light, but still get to experience the tradition that everyone in Pittsburgh is already familiar with. It's these spooks and discounts that especially appeal to area college students. Every year because it's so much fun. It's just like it's an amusement park and it's like scary and it just like gets me in the spirit, I guess. The spirit <laughs> of Halloween. It's really nice yeah. to get scared. I purposely try. Ten haunts and scare zones and 17 transformed thrill rides are set up throughout the park. So come down if you dare and enjoy all the thrills and the chills of this year's Phantom Fright Nights. You can't help but get into the Halloween spirit by being here. And trust me, they're waiting for you. <laughs> Reporting for Point News 4, I'm Julia Kramer. Speaking of chills, fall temperatures are in full swing. Kelsey Metzger is here with your forecast. Jillian, definitely a lot chillier out now. I think we were kind of spoiled for the first few weeks of the semester, but as leaves start changing colors, the temperatures are unfortunately falling. This morning, 50 degrees, noontime 63, that is our high for the day, will fall back down to 61 degrees tonight. And then kind of a similar tune for the rest of our weekend here. We're gonna have Friday and Saturday, both 61, so low 60s for the highs for uh, both Friday and Saturday. Some rain on Friday, but Saturday looks to be partly cloudy, so shouldn't ruin your weekend too much. Then you take a look at Sunday, 63 degrees as a high, so bumps up a little bit, but not too bad. We're still kind of hanging around there. And you know, now I think Chris has a look at penguin season starts tonight, and we'll see what he's got. That's right, Kelsey. It's a hockey night in Pittsburgh. The Pens began their quest for the Stanley Cup tonight against the Anaheim Ducks at the Console Energy Center. This is a new beginning for the Pens after the firings of general manager Ray Shiro and head coach Dan Bilesma. The new regime of new GM Jim Rutherford and head coach Mike Johnston begins with high expectations, and that's bringing the Cup back to the Berg. Also, this is a new look for the Pens lineup as well. Defenseman Brooks Orpik and Matt Niskanen left in free agency, as well as wingers UC Jokinen and James Neal. The Pens reloaded with the signings of defenseman Christian Erhoff, who spent last season with the Buffalo Sabres, 
and winger Steve Downey, who left the rival Flyers in the offseason. Questions swirl around this team after the last few seasons of being bounced early in the playoffs. The, the new look team gets a chance to answer these questions tonight. The Steelers look to pull off another victory this weekend after defeating Jacksonville 17-9 on Sunday. They travel up to Cleveland to face the rival Browns. Now these are not your father's Browns. Last week the Browns made the largest come from behind victory by a road team in NFL history. This is also the same Browns team that almost came back against the Steelers in Game 1 after trailing 24-3. The success came in large part due to the hurry up offense, with which excuse me, head coach Mike Tomlin said this week, I'd be surprised if they didn't go to it early, at least to check our overall readiness in this football game. Now staying in the world of football, the NFL will start cracking down on the use of human growth hormone by players. The League and Players Association agreed to a new policy implemented on Monday. Throughout the season, 950 tests will be done on players and 385 will be done in the offseason. The test will be at random. If a player is caught with HGH, they will face a minimum two-game suspension with longer suspensions for repeat offenders. Now America's favorite pastime is hitting the home stretch of the season. The League Championship Series will begin tomorrow with the American League matchup of the Baltimore Orioles and the Kansas City Royals. Now one of these teams will break a World Series drought as the last time the Royals was there was back in 1985 and the Royals back in, or excuse me, Orioles back in 1983. Now in the National League matchup, both teams are very familiar with this stage. The St. Louis Cardinals are on their fourth straight time being there and the San Francisco Giants for the third time in four seasons. Staying with baseball, the Pirates may have had their second straight winning season, but the offseason can bring a whole new look to this baseball club. Gold Gulf catcher Russell Martin is the big name floating around and, he, and excuse me, he is expected to see big money come his way in the free agent market. If the Pirates do lose Martin to free agency, top names in the market would be John Buck, Ryan Doman and A.J. Przinski. Other notable Pirate free agents include pitchers Edison Volquez and Francisco Liriano, as well as shortstop Clint Barmas. Now the Pittsburgh Panthers, they began their season with so much hope after a 3-0 start, but three straight losses have them holding on to bull eligibility hopes by a thread. They take on ACC rival Virginia Tech this weekend at Heinz Field. The Penn State Nittany Lions look to rebound from their homecoming loss to Northwestern. They're going to travel up to the Big House in Ann Arbor to take on Michigan. West Virginia beat up on Big 12 conference opponent Kansas 33-14 last week, and they look to carry the momentum as they travel down to Lubbock, Texas to take on Texas Tech. The Point Park volleyball team has had a solid season going, sitting in first place in the KIAC with a record of 7-1. They're near the end of their season with only two more conference matchups on the 14th and the 21st before the conference tournament. You know, our gym is very unique. It's small, it's very intimate, and uh, we get our fans in there. It really creates a great home atmosphere environment, which you know, creates a little uh, additional stress for the uh, opposing team. So uh, we're, we're, we're blessed this year to have that opportunity. And uh, yeah, our gym is very unique, but uh, I, I think it'll be a nice, uh, nice energetic uh, environment. The team will also be hosting the conference championship on November 14th and 15. Guys, they have the home court advantage. Pioneers, they want your support, and isn't this big for them hosting it at home? It's pretty big, Chris. I think, I think with this with this support, it could really push them over to the next level. <laughs> well, that does it for Point News. Be sure to join us next Thursday live at 2 p.m. Have a great week, everybody.